What's up everyone, my name is Alex, I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at MyInvestingClub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. What's up guys, uh, it's uh, Tom Dizzo here. I hope you guys had a great trading week this week. Uh, today I'm gonna go over uh, to one of the topic. I, I mean, I've been getting so many DMs uh, from the members asking about this. And also I've seen a lot of questions uh, in uh, today's weekend mentoring session. And so I thought it could be a you know, re really good idea to go over them in detail uh, so that you guys know exactly what I'm looking for or uh, know exactly uh, what to look for right so the topic uh, for today is how you can scale into a low-hanging fruit the low-hanging fruit is the setup that uh, uh, basically that's uh, M uh, what MIC teaches uh, or uh, I've done a, a video uh, about that as well and that's how I kind of grew my account uh, from really small amount to pretty much a you know considerable uh, good amount of money based on that uh, strategy only and uh, so uh, today uh, we're gonna go over some chart and I'm gonna tell you exactly how I would scale into them and also the risk management part uh, and also what if uh, you know your line uh, didn't hit it's like uh, uh, we try to use the outer lines uh, the most right so uh, so uh, let's uh, get into this yeah so one of the example here that I have it was a uh, few days back thing was like Wednesday so what does low-hanging fruit mean what is the true low-hanging fruit right uh, that's uh, you know this questions a lot of new members asking and but if you guys here have been here long enough you already know that so uh, the low-hanging fruit is is the continuation uh, of a day two play right so we want to start to kind of gap up on whatever news or you know farmer or whatever uh, who's pumping that and uh, you know uh, we see a huge move uh, on day one right basically that's a hot check on day one so you can see that move on uh, Wednesday pre-market here and right at the open you know shoots up and then basically the real idea behind this is we want the stock to become a hot check on day one to be really extended right and then one stock is kind of crash as you can see here it dies off it kind of died uh, from Wednesday and basically the you know the big thesis behind that is we want the longs to get trapped right so uh, all those uh, you know who are longing here and there here 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 they are all baggies right and as soon as stocks uh, you know died they uh, be became like a you know trap here and they would really want to sell any any pops into that the next mornings that's uh you know the thesis behind the low hanging fruit and so we want a continuation on the broken stock on the day one and we want for it to pop so that we, we can short the bounce right and once the stock bounce uh, those baggies or those who are chasing longs here they they i mean they pretty much got stuck here right on day one and they want to see a chance for them to pop back and uh, you know to basically um, kind of get out of, of that trade and so that's why we always prefer you know the good pop into the solid resistance or support based on that uh, you know that our baggies that who tried along here uh, uh, or like uh, here and there they, they would probably to get a you know bell or like exit into so I'm gonna just gonna put an example here, Chris, right? I mean the stock doesn't pop, but uh, uh, the real thesis behind this is we want to draw a clear support and resistance uh, from from the other day, right? From the day one. So what I can see here is 
as you can see here this is the line you know this is the resistance uh, sorry and you know toss is really acting up lately and I don't know why all the wicks uh, you know late print but you can see here uh, you know I, I, I try to use the whole and half dollar mark as well so in this case it's like the stock uh, let's say this is the morning right uh, the pre-market uh, on Thursday that's what we want to kind of uh, you know short into uh, the pops uh, so uh, I would be looking at the first of all when the stock is at 1.8 that you know the first line when I'm looking at is like 2 2.5 and 3 right so you can draw it down here 2.5 and 3 I mean those are the whole and half dollar mark but you have you need to cope with them with the pivot uh, so uh, I can't tell you uh, what are the pivots on this one as you can see here uh, the the pivots are like 231 so um, you know that's why I said I, I would probably scaling into this line all the way to 2.5 okay probably the next pivot is 3 right so you know it matches my criteria and you know that's a whole and a half dollar mark here I saw some resistance here as well you can see some resistance uh, you know 2.8 and you know 2.5 you know and so I, I want to use the pivot with you know the whole and half dollar mark and those are usually are very powerful and uh, I try to kind of scale into them so the thesis or the plan uh, behind this is really simple uh, you see the pivot here uh, 2.3 right uh, so I'm gonna scale that from 2.3 all the way to like 3 maybe risk over that so let's say whatever like you have I don't know 2.3 or like uh, 2.5 to 7 75 or 3 here let's say you have four bullets right and how I usually kind of trade this is based on this since I'm using trade zero right and since I'm using trade zero and locates are you know a little bit more expensive and usually the cheapest you can get is around like two cents or something like that so I really don't want to be paying for that kind of amount you know whatever the amount thousand shares or four thousand shares and you know if you multiply that by two cents you know four thousand shares that's 80 bucks right but I really don't want to locate kind of beforehand unless I'm using Cobra like Bao Alex or everyone does so they can get really cheap so I can you know could locate some and just put my fantasy out there but in this case uh, the locates are very expensive for me so I have to kind of you know be careful with that because there are so many hangers on the day right there could be four or five and and if you locating on every single one of them I mean it's kind of adds up and let's say you know four tickers uh, you spending uh, you know on average like 50 bucks it's already you you're already down 200 bucks right and for you know God knows uh, if that uh, one stock is gonna pop to that line but that's the best case scenario right that's in perfect world scenario and even if it did I mean uh, let's say you have here four bullets right and uh, 2.3 1,000 shares here another 1,000 another 1,000 but let's say your stock pops to three and it kind of fill your last bullet I mean you don't really want that to be happening I mean I've been there and I saw a lot of stock that uh, once they pop they do pop a lot more and you I mean it's good to have a line there but uh, uh, but you can have a, you know uh, you you can put your fantasy out there but if the last bullet hit likely I mean you're gonna be really uh, emotional after that and I can guarantee you that uh, because I, I, I've been there and you know I was scaling up and once the last bullet hit I was like you know pretty much panicking because I'm in full size right when the stock is up and uh, so how you can how can you and you know be able to avoid that you know I've been getting a lot of uh, questions about this is like Tom uh, you know uh, the low-hanging fruit recently uh, recently they don't even pop but once they do pop right uh, I got in like you know uh, like full size but once they pop only to one line you know I got in only my starter but uh, you know I, I, I got very small win but once they they kind of do pop all the way back you know I'm down huge already you know I'm usually down my full size but I'm winning with my starter size 
basically I think that's everyone is struggling with and it's no easy way how to say it because uh, I don't know where stock uh, or where it's gonna pop right I mean the only thesis that I have is the probability is that if it pops from 2.3 to 2 like uh, to 3 here the chances are it's gonna fail right that's all my probabilities but how can I be able to take advantage of that when they come like even what if they just pop to like one 2.5 right it's uh, it doesn't even hit to my three line but how can I take advantage of that and and, and try to kind of use uh, you know more size on those instead of just like one starter all right guys so I see you on next one take care have a good one Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.